Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And today we're back with body fluids. Yeah. CSF to start with. Yeah, we're getting into the interesting stuff, right? Mm -hmm. At least to me, sorry. <laughs> sorry, synovial fluids. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so CSFs are interesting as a body fluid, uh, because they're kind of like feast or famine. Mm. They're either going to be the easiest fluid that you like count and do a diff on or, um, or more involved. Mm. Uh, obviously oh. the, the cerebrospinal cavity is, you know, sensitive, uh, important. I will say though, like the easy spinal fluids are the ones that students typically get most frustrated with oh 100 percent. because yeah. there's no cells yeah 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 you have to adapt your techniques a little bit to uh to low cell counts um because like, focusing is incredibly difficult right so perhaps you like pre-focus take a slide that's like heavily uh cellular focus on it swap it out with the with your slide right you need to be careful to not do the diff on the wrong specimen or so, right was, um and then yeah and i think staying organized as you move through the slide is difficult all those things kind of need practice um what i will say though is that once you are experienced that's not nearly like a a, a big hurdle so once you work through that and learn you get to go yeah and i think it just the in general students in new tech struggle with like following that serpentine pattern mm. that they're supposed to follow and and whether that be a peripheral blood smear or uh, a body fluid and once they get that down like you were saying then it becomes much easier because once you figure out how to move from this field to the next direct adjacent field it becomes a lot more intuitive yep yep yeah so um so yeah a lot of csfs have like really low cellularity this doesn't appear to be the case for this particular csf um so as always we want to like scan around and look for anything that's grabbing our attention so really just kind of just we're scanning right so just kind of on scan i'm seeing lots of you can tell there's some neutrophils in there yep but there's a large number of mononuclear cells. Yes. Yep. I see that as well. So we have these solid circular like nuclei, and then we have our segmented uh, polys likely. And then we're also getting a feel for how the cells are distributed on the, uh, on the smear itself. So as Melissa is scanning through, I can see the circle, so to speak, of the cells. Um, well, I'm coming back this way because we finished our scan. Mm -hmm. so we're yep, so we don't see anything crazy. No, nothing too crazy. And like we said, they're mononuclear cells, but they're not like big, honking, ugly mononuclear cells. Right, yeah. But they're sure. they're about the size of a hematopoietic yeah. cell. So. Okay, so I'm going to drop to 40. Sounds good. All right. And just like some of our other uh, the uh, our other body fluids, we're looking for like critical findings like bacteria and things like that. Although I'm sorry, you're on 40, right? So not quite looking for bacteria, but um, yeah. So like you said, there's neutrophils and then there's some um, of these mononuclear cells. And yeah. then there's one cell in particular that looks interesting. Yeah, I'm going to move it in the center and then I'm going to drop to 100. Love our par focal lenses, our objectives. All right, so I'll do a quick preamble before we talk about that particular cell, right? But so we talked about staining already in a lot of these uh, body fluid um, videos here, but so please take into account CSFs usually stain in very fair, very light kind of colors and stuff. So we kind of expect that. Um, but there's one cell in particular that Melissa noticed and dropped down on that's got a deeper, mm -hmm. <laughs> always does that. <laughs> you might think I learned my lesson. <clears throat> it's uh, got a deeper, darker, more blue basophilic cytoplasm. And it's got some other interesting features too, right? Yeah, it's got a beautiful perinuclear half right there. Yep. Which is just oh. a fancy way of saying that there's a, a clearing next to the nucleus and 
it's the Golgi apparatus. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so our Golgi doesn't take up stain particularly well. So in a, a cell like this, that's got a lot of stuff to stain, that one spot kind of stands out more, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it also looks a bit eccentrically placed. So I may be deliberately spelling out a definition you might find <laughs> in a textbook. Um, but yeah, this cell looks reactive in nature. Um, the chromatin pattern looks fairly mature. Uh, I, I see nothing crazy standing out to me there. But this does appear to be a plasma cell, right? Or at least plasma cytoid um, in nature. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I think because of the really prominent perinuclear Hoff, I would be comfortable saying that this is a plasma cell and not yep. just a, a reactive lymph. Yep. The, the other thing, too, about that blue is if we look at some of the other lymphs, so I'll pick on this fella down here, um, the cytoplasm is really, really light. It's barely noticeable blue, right? It's it's like really, really light. So then imagine that if this was a peripheral blood, this would probably be like neon blue, like glow in the dark, uh, dark blue. And it, it makes sense because like we've talked about with peripheral bloods, and the imma immature cells is that they have a lot of active RNA because they have a lot of stuff going on with maturing and trying to make things and whatnot. Well, if you think about what does a plasma cell do? Well, it's trying to make immunoglobulins. So one, it's going to have immunoglobulins. And then two, it's going to have active RNA, active everything in the cytoplasm. So between the RNA and the immunoglobulins, that's really going to stay in the cytoplasm of the plasma cells. Yep, absolutely. So that was an interesting fella. Um, yeah. We do see what I might call a mono off to the left here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then the differential is pretty textbook from there. We have neutrophils and lymphocytes, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And some of these, I always like that in body fluids, you can really see the filaments in between the segments of the neutrophils. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Really cool. Well, I think that's, I think, I think the neutrophils and lymphocytes are fairly straightforward. I don't think we need yeah. to actively. Yeah. Make that many I don't think so. Okay. Um, let's, let's take a move on then. <clears throat> so then having seen and called that plasma cell, we're going to be looking for other reactive type features and maybe even organisms or things that could be um, causing those cells to become reactive. So this guy does have cytoplasm again. It's just really light. Yep. And this this guy to me looks monocytoid again. Yeah, absolutely. So some yeah, kind of mono mac over here. Yep. Bunch of lymphs. This yep. is a lymph also. Just agreed. Doing a weird thing. Then a couple of neutrophils. Yep. Agreed. So we're seeing somewhat of a predominance of uh, of lymphocytes with a fair amount of neutrophils still. That's but repeating here. CSF, and we're seeing lots yeah. of lymphocytes and plasma yeah. cells. Yeah. So maybe this is another uh, good opportunity too. So when we so typically body fluid cell counts are paired with a differential. Mm -hmm. The cell count's intention is to enumerate the number of nucleated cells and the number of red cells, depending on the fluid and procedures. Okay. So the differential uh, of a normal CSF. And so a normal CSF is typically less than three, less than five cells per uh, microliter. So very, very low cell concentration. We typically see predominantly lymphocytes and monocytes slash macrophages. Yeah. Um, so this sort of uh, follows what we might expect in a differential uh, percent wise. I would say there's a bit more neutrophils than uh, would be normally expected. And then certainly uh, these, I, did, we might call this guy a plasma cell. What do you think, Melissa? Yeah, uh, he's, it, and the chromatin pattern, I feel like, is even more a plasma cytoid than the, the last. The only thing that would make this perfect, like maybe if the cytoplasm was a little bit like larger, is more cytoplasm. But that is like, that's pretty textbook. You're not going to get much better uh, than that. And then this guy over here, I feel like he's just a really, really large lymphoid cell i don't yeah. i don't think i would go with quite a plasma cell yet i think he's more yeah. of just like a, a reactive atypical sort of lymph 
Yeah, I think I'd be inclined to go reactive or atypical. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No perinuclear. Hoff really, like maybe starting here, yeah. but not not quite as prominent. The cytoplasm is is colored, but the chromatin pattern isn't quite as clumpy as I'd want to see it. The other thing that I want to point out, and maybe this isn't the best field to to do that because there's other things, other interesting things going on with these uh, plasma cells, is I just want to point out that the lymphocytes all look like they have nucleoli. Mm. Mm -hmm. like this guy here. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. And still normal limbs, though. 100% agree. Yeah. Th these are features of the nucleus that you probably wouldn't see in peripheral blood just right. because of the nature. So when you look at a cell in peripheral blood, this is a three-dimensional object. I had an instructor who called them gumballs. Um, he was a microbiology professor. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but, but that's a good uh, mental picture. Um, and then when it comes to, ooh, how beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, when it comes to these cells on the cytospin, they're as close to two-dimensional as you can get in a three-dimensional object. They've been smushed, smashed onto uh, onto the slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the plasma is cytoid-ish, right? Yeah. Um, depending on your tolerances. Uh, for me personally, I think the point has been illustrated. If we're putting out two, three percent plasma cells um, and maybe some reactives, the picture the clinical picture should be you know pretty clear for the uh clinicians yeah continue what you were saying about limbs though the gum yeah, balls yeah. and smashing them yeah yeah so so when it's in that ball like more of a three-dimensional picture in the peripheral blood you might not see the nucleoli or nucleoli remnant and then they become much more prominent where we're seeing them in, in pretty much every cell here it is nothing to be alarmed about it is not uh, abnormal. I mean, I would say that that's probably the rule more than it is the exception that you see these little nucleoli on um, cytospun differentials. Agreed. And it's, again, because of the cytospinning process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, hopefully you'll see as we go through these, um, when there are malignant cells in body fluids, um, they are very dramatic, right? So just like if this is making a normal lymph look a little bit scary, wait till you see like blasts and things like that on a cytospin. Ooh. Wow, beautiful blue. So we have a deeply basophilic cell in the, uh, in the center. Um, probably go like reactive atypical, I guess. Just yeah, because okay. it doesn't have those like textbook features of a plasma cell. Yep. I agree. But certainly a reactive picture is mm -hmm. developing here, um, favoring uh, lymphocytes mm -hmm. in uh, their predominant. Um, so I don't know what the diagnosis for this slide is, but I tend to think of like a viral meningitis, yep. um, something, something to that effect. Yep. And then this guy here, is a macrophage. Agreed. Yep. Big, fluffy, large cytoplasm. Significant. It's a really larger. pretty slide. Mm -hmm. It's a really pretty slide. I like the way the cells look. So now, if we were to flip the differential, so to speak, and there would be a predominance of neutrophils, there's a general inclination to want to look for like yeast or bacteria, maybe causing some kind of uh, uh, infection. My guess is that the neutrophils that are here are mostly just responding to the general inflammatory condition uh, of the, the probably the viral meningitis. We have another. Ooh, yeah. Plasmacytoid cell over here. Yep. Yep. So some of these, they look kind of big and scary, right? But the nuclear, the chromatin pattern looks great. It looks totally, totally normal. Totally normal for the cell that, remember, it's a reactive or a plasma cell and its function is to respond. Yes, exactly. So it's normal for the cell and its functionality. Yes, yep. Very pretty, huh? That's a big fella. Yeah. 
I love that it's right next to this too. So, um, so the uh, the the mono here, great uh, juxtaposition for the color of the cytoplasm. Yeah. So if we think about our monos, we normally have that blue gray kind of light cytoplasm. You can see that um, if we brought the blue up in this one a little bit, right? This would be like glow in the dark blue <laughs> on a peripheral blood smear. Yeah. <clears throat> great cool well i think that's about it for this slide yeah yeah i agree so we saw no organisms or anything so i think no, we feel which, comfortable signing out our diff which makes sense with the the lymphocytic picture that we're seeing with this absolutely okay cool. well thanks for watching thank you for your time